Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Elgin High School for tonight's matchup between the Pflugerville Conley Cougars and your Elgin Lady Wildcats. My name is Brian Reed. I'll bring you the action tonight here on Vipe Live. And I told this is a pay-per-view broadcast, so if you have paid to view this broadcast, I do hope you enjoy what you're listening to, and I do appreciate you tuning in. Elgin, going to Max Preps, comes into this game 11-3, 4-0 district play. We'll take that with a grain of salt. The Conley Cougars, winless on the season. So we started for the first victory. Elgin will look to continue their hot streak in district play. It'll be Jessica Cantrell on, sorry, in the circle, and she'll be uh, pitching to Cameron Davis behind home plate. First base tonight will be Mackenzie Ferris. At second base, it'll be em Emily Sumner. Playing shortstop will be Jalen Roberson. At third base, we'll have Bella Ramirez. And left field, we'll have Peyton Altmeyer in center field, we will have Cassidy Davis, and in right field, Dakota Brown, coached by Adam Adamson, assisted by Sarah Elman and Andrea Gonzalez. And for the 
Conley Cougars, they will send Cameron Simpson, Kaylee Kapua, and Leah Martinez to face Jessica Cantrell. That's one, two, and three in the order. Followed by Gia. Sarati, Logan Rivas, Anna, Ayana Gordon, Isabella Alba Bork, Lucia Suarez, and Penelope Salinas. And I do have to apologize because the camera is in the stands right now. So I'm trying my darndest to get first and third in the same shot. It is really tough to do. And it will shake a little bit because people are coming in and out. So I do apologize. First pitch of the ball game is outside for a ball from Cantrell. Simpson steps in. Here in the top of the first inning. 1-0 pitch from Cantrell. That one misses, it's two balls, no strikes. Let's go, ready for a 2-0 pitch, here it comes. That one's in there for a strike. Kind of floated one in there. So two balls, one strike in the top of the first. No one on, nobody out. 2-1 pitch from Cantrell. That one misses, and a good hitter's count for Simpson early on. Simpson steps in. Bit of a close stance, holds the bat high. 3-1 pitch. That one catches the knees, and it's 3-2 and two now. So payoff pitch to Simpson, swung on a miss, strike three. <laughs> Jessica Cantrell falls behind three and one, able to come back and strike out the leadoff hitter Simpson. Now bring up Kapua. The one on, one out here in the top of the first inning. Wind blowing right at her backs. First pitch to Kapua. Upstairs for a ball. It's one ball and no strikes. Cantrell ready. Swings the arm around. Here we go. That one misses. It's 2-0. Oh. Second straight batter. Cantrell has missed the first two pitches. Trail ready, 2-0 pitch. That one misses low, 3-0 count to Kapua. Trail resets, ready for 3-0 pitch, here it comes. That one catches the outside corner, it's 3-1. Trail, pitching to Kapua. Davis behind home plate. 3 1 count. Cantrell's ready. Here's the pitch. Swung on and miss. It's 3 and 2 now. So Cantrell behind 3 and 0 has worked the count full. Ready for a payoff pitch. In there, strike three. Second straight batter that uh, Cantrell has gotten behind, but come back to strike out. Now bring up Leo Martinez for the Connolly Cougars. Two away here in the top of the first inning. As that time Cantrell throws a first pitch strike. Like you know, I got the baseball team right behind me. And they are hype. Well, one pitch to Martinez, swung on and missed. He took a hard cut at that one.
Martinez ready for an 0-2 pitch. That one misses inside off the glove of Davis. It's one and two. And trail break for one, two, here it comes. Swung on and missed, strike three. Jessica Cantrell strikes out the side. And after a half inning, our score, Connolly nothing, Elgin coming up. You're listening to Elgin Softball on the Vibe Media Network. Keep it here. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, about yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Bottom half of the first inning here at Elgin High School. Jessica Cantrell just struck out the side. And they're going to send Robertson, Davis, and Ramirez. That's one, two, and three. Do up four. Your Elgin Wildcats. That'll be followed by Mackenzie Farish, Jessica Cantrell, Peyton at Miller, Cameron Davis, Emily Sumner, and Dakota Brown. In the circle for the Connolly Cougars is Cameron Sipson. She'll be pitching to Gia Sarardi. Playing first base will be Kaylee Kapua. At second base will be Isabella Alba Bork. Playing shortstop will be Leah Martinez. Third base, Logan Rivas. In left field will be Ayana Gordon. In center field, Penelope Salinas. And in right field, wait, sorry. Suarez will be playing center field. Penelope Salinas will be playing right field. So Simpson in the circle should be pitching to Robertson. Conley still winless on the season. The JV team for Elgin beat Conley 15 to nothing. That game was called in the fourth inning with the bases loaded and nobody out. So Jayla Roberson, and I should know that. She was on the basketball team. Back all a few of those games. The crowd's really high behind me. His first pitch from Simpson misses up high. I see a student section coming out there, really getting hype on this one. They are right behind me. Gibson, ready, Robertson, open stance, holds the bat high, waits for an open pitch, slams that one to left field, but it's going to be over the head of the left fielder, Gordon, They go all the way to the wall. Roberson is going to walk into second base with a leadoff double. The the Misplayed by Gordon. And I'll bring up Cassidy Davis, but the runner at second base is nobody out. As the left fielder, Gordon, ran in just a little bit, and that one just flew right over her head. Not very much win, but it is right behind us. Pitch to Davis. That one misses. It's 0-1. Sorry, it's 1-0. and Been have very many softball games, and they heard a crowd this hype by a team. 1-0 pitch, that one slammed to left field. Gordon racing over and it's gonna land in foul territory. Oh, I don't know about that one. That was a very, very close pitch right there. And it was, can't see it in the camera shot unfortunately, but it did look like it could have possibly been in fair territory, but the umpire was right there. He ruled that one foul. And so Davis will get another opportunity here. Roberson over at second base. Davis steps in, Simpson ready. 1-1 pitch, that one's hit to left field. 
Gordon ranging over, gets underneath it. She makes the catch. Roberson trying a tag, heading on over to third base. She will successfully tag. <laughs> so a productive out for Davis as Roberson heads on over to third base for the first out. And that will bring up Bella Ramirez. So one way here in the bottom of the first inning. Scoreboard says it's the second. Mares with a very open stance, trying to pull this one. That pitch goes almost over the head of Sorardi. So one ball, no strikes to Ramirez. Robertson over at third base. There's only one out here in the bottom of the first inning. Wildcats threatening. Pitch is way inside. That's going to go away from his right. Actually, that's going to hit. It hit Ramirez. So Roberson's going to head back over to third base. And we'll get runners at the corners with one out for the cleanup hitter, Mackenzie Ferris. So Roberson having to stay put after the hit by pitch on Ramirez. Very open stance once again for Ferris. He's up in the box too. First pitch. That one's hit to left field. Gordon ranging over, looking back. Gone! <laughs> Mackenzie Ferris just launched one to left field using that open stance up in the box. She pulls it over the head of Gordon, and it's 3 0 Wildcats. <laughs> So there's still nobody out for Jessica Cantrell. Kinsey Ferris jumps all over that pitch from Simpson. Except for Jessica Cantrell and she swings ahead of that one as Simpson pulled the string. And Cantrell was also trying to get one over the fence as well. Cantrell ready, 0-1 pitch. Swings and fouls one back at the plate. It's 0-2. Gantrell getting back in the box, it's 0-2. Gantrell ready. Pitch from Simpson is low for a ball. So one, two count to Jessica Cantrell. Crowd is really getting high behind me. Cantrell ready for a one, two. She slams that one to left field, and that one's gonna be off the wall. Cantrell had eased up. I think she had thought he had hit one over the fence, but she cruises in with a one-out double. All but one batter has faced in the first five. Now I'll bring up Hayden Altmiller. First left-hander. I think the umpire may be discussing the coach and about the the sun coming in. And that's why. So Andrea Villarreal coming in to pinch run or be a courtesy runner for Jessica Cantrell. As you are allowed that in. High school softball as well as in high school baseball. Pinch runner for the catcher or the pitcher. So Villarreal over at second base. Alt Miller at the plate, and she looks at one up above her head. Alt Miller ready for a 1 0 pitch and swings and misses at a pitch outside. It's 1 and 1. Miller holds a bat in front of her. 
Ready for a 1-1 one -one pitch, that one's upstairs. It's 2-1, Villarreal over at second base. Three runs have already come across here in the bottom of the first inning, only one away for the Wildcats. Leading the Connolly Cougars. Oh, Miller ready for a 1-1 one -one pitch. That one's going to be ran into right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. They're going to send Villarreal home as Selena is only just now picking up the ball. It's 4 to nothing. Wildcats. I'm not sure what to rule that one, but I'm going to give Vaughn Miller the double. And I'll bring up Cameron Davis. So four runs have already come across here for the Wildcats. There's only one out here in the bottom of the first inning. So pitch from Davis, that one rolls in there and hits Davis. Second hit by pitch for Simpson this inning. And there's two on with one away for Sumner. So Wildcats with a chance to really jump all over him. And I know what you're saying, they already have, but I mean, really jump all over the Cougars. Outfield shade slightly to pull, Suarez. Not quite straight up, pitches Sumner. That one comes inside, that one clips Sumner. Bases are now full of Wildcats for the nine hole hitter Brown. So Dakota Brown steps in. So we get Alt Miller over at third base, Davis at second, Sumner at first for Dakota Brown. First pitch, upstairs for a ball. Roberson, who led off this inning with a double, is on deck. Bases loaded, 1-0 pitch to Brown as she swung for the fences there but comes up empty, it's one and one. You know, full disclosure, I've actually have never seen a grand slam in my entire life. I've seen a few on TV, but never in person. Would love to see one right now, and I'm sure Brown would like to see it too. One, one pitch, that one's inside. It misses, two and one. Sibson ready. 2-1 pitch to Brown, swung on and missed. A little bit ahead of that one. So you see Coach Adams saying, slow it down a little bit. Get, just try to pull it if you can. 2-2 two -two pitch, and just catches a piece of that one, stays alive as she fouls it back. Al Miller over at third base, Davis at second, Sumner at first. 2-2 Two -two count, one away here in the bottom of the first, Roberson on deck. Two-two, two -two. popped up, should be playable. Catcher ranging over, at Ciarte makes the catch. Everyone stays put, and there's two away. So Wildcats bust my scorecard, and that brings us to the top of the order. Roberson, only two Wildcats have not reached base. Four have scored. Roberson is one of them. Scoring on the Ferris home run. She led this game off with a double to left field over Gordon's head as he looks at the first pitch. That one's in there for a strike. Wildcats, two away here in the bottom of the first inning. Trying to get this one as... That one's on the ground to second, off the glove, the second baseman, Alta Brook, and that will be thrown over the first base, and that will end the inning. So the Wildcats score four, but they leave them loaded. So after a complete inning, our score, Wildcats four, Cougars, nothing. You're listening to Elgin Wildcat Softball on the Vibe Media Network. Keep it here. 
for high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe. VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13. Again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds. Really close at the corner. Rotates the Wilson. She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VYPE.com. Top of the second inning here at Elgin High School. Wildcats leading the Conley Cougars four to nothing. Jessica Cantrell, the one, two, three, and top of the first, where she struck out all three batters. There'll be Asardi, Rebus, and Gordon due up for the Conley Cougars. That's four, five, and six in the order. Once again, a reminder of the defense for the Elgin Wildcats. It's Cantrell in the circle. She's pitching to Davis. Ferris over at first base. Sumner over at second. Roberson over at shortstop. We'll make an adjustment here. Ramirez over at third base. Alt Miller in left field. Davis in center. Brown over in right. So the catcher, Sarate, will step in now. First pitch from Cantrell. Catches the outside corner for a strike. One-0 pitch from Cantrell. It's low. It's one and one to Sorardi. One one pitch from Cantrell swung on and missed as Roddy went chasing after that one. It's one and two. And the baseball team behind me is letting them have it as that one's fouled on the ground, first baseline. And trail ready, one, two pitch. In, balls what he said. That was a very loud screaming of the word ball. I thought for a minute there he had called strike three. Then nothing. Seems to count two and two. That time, strike three. So one away here in the top of the second, nobody on for Rebus. Rebus ready, first pitch from Cantrell. That one misses the outside, it's one and oh. Top of the second, one out, nobody on. Wildcats leading by four. One on pitch from Rebus. Play from Cantrell to Rebus and it catches the corner, it's one and one. Left fielder Gordon on deck. One one pitch, bounces in there. It's two and one. Wildcats four and zero oh in district play. Looking to continue that streak here. Two one pitch, and that one's cut on and missed as Rebus tried to golf at that one. So it's two and two. 
Here's the pitch from Cantrell. That one misses inside. Rivas does not offer. It was pretty square stance. 3 2 pitch. That one's in there for strike three. Fifth strikeout in a row for Jessica Cantrell. As Anya Gordon steps in now, the left fielder. That's the first pitch from Cantrell. That one misses outside. A little bit of zip on it. one -oh pitch to Gordon. And that one misses upstairs. It's 2-0. and -oh. Cantrell's 2 0 pitch to Gordon. Low, it's 3 and 0. <laughs> 3 0 pitch to Gordon. That one's in there for a strike as Gordon backed away. And he gives the 3-0 pitch. That one catches the outside corner. So second time tonight, Jessica Cantrell has a 3-0 count and has worked it full. She's done that in a couple 3-1 counts as well. So payoff pitch to Gordon. Here he comes. And she weakly swings at it, but fouls it back. Stays alive. Two away, nobody on. Top of the second inning. Cantrell has struck out five in a row to begin this ballgame. Here comes the payoff pitch. That one's hit over the glove of Sumner and into right field. Gordon able to just grab a piece of it, and that's a base hit for the Connolly Cougars. So first base runner tonight for Connolly. So Alba Bork will step in now. Gordon over at first base. Two out in the top of the second inning. Elgin leading four to nothing over the Conley Cougars. Mr. Bork is swung on and missed. It looked like Davis was standing up. Looked more like a pitch out than anything else. One no pitch to Bork. Misses upstairs. It's one and one. One one pitch to Bork and swung on and missed at that one. That was in the exact same spot. So one two counts to Bork. Gordon over at first base. There's two away in the top of the second. One, two, and pulled the string on that one, Jessica Cantrell, and she picks up her sixth strikeout. Conley gets one on, but they do not score. We'll head to the bottom of the second with our score. Elgin Wildcats four, Conley nothing. You're listening to Elgin Softball on the Vibe Media Network. Keep it here. Hey, buddy. You say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Hallelujah. 
Go to VibeBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Bottom of the second inning here at Elgin High School. Wildcats leading four to nothing. It'll be Davis, Ramirez, and Ferris to up. That's two, three, and four for the Elgin Wildcats. Davis is one of the one of like two batters in the first inning when they batted the round to not reach base. However, she'd have a sacrifice getting Roberson over to third base to eventually score on the McKenzie Ferris home run. So Cassie Davis will step in now. Davis hit one to left field, but Gordon was able to get under this one. Almost every hit for the Wildcats has gone to left field. And there haven't been as many as you'd think. Only been a few, actually. As first pitch, that one's off the glove of Alba Borgden into right field. Davis, now only one more batter is not reached and that is Dakota Brown. But Albert Bella Ramirez was hit by a pitch last time up. But for the Wildcats, it's talking about how many hits they've had. They haven't had very many. Surprisingly, they've had one, two, three, four hits. As every other batter has reached by a hit by a pitch. So for Davis, that's the fifth pitch for the Wildcats. Ramirez hit by a pitcher last time up, came around to score, first pitch inside. Heading on over to second base and successfully stealing will be Davis. <laughs> believe it or not, that single by Davis is the first hit that I, at least I have credited as a single. Everything else has been extra base hits. So runner in scoring position with nobody out for Ramirez. 1-0 pitch, way inside once again, it's 2-0. Wide open stance for Ramirez. 2-0 pitch. That one rolls away from the catcher, Swarty. Heading on over to third base will be Davis. I think she was running with that one all the way. Now let's check the count by the umpire and make sure that I got the correct count. will not hold his hand up, so I think the count's 3-0. Oh. Scoreboard says 2-0. Oh. Let's see what she says, and I was right. That was ball four, so runners at the corners, nobody out for Mackenzie Ferris. An interesting situation. Last time she was up, there was one away with runners at the corners, and she hit one over the head of Gordon in left field and over the wall. See if she can do it again, first pitch. And she slams it to left field. If it's fair, it's gone, it's foul. Oh, Ferris tried to jump all over that Simpson fastball and just got a little ahead of it. It would have been a six RBI day in the second inning for Mackenzie Ferris. It's Ferris with that wide open stance. It's the center fielder Suarez is shaded to the left as a one pitch misses upstairs. There's nobody out in the bottom of the second. Runs out the corners. That's Davis at third. Ramirez over at first base. Ferris at the plate. One one pitch from Simpson. Here it comes. Now one misses upstairs. It's two and one. So Ferris waiting for a 2-1 pitch from Simpson. Here it comes. Alwyn rolls in there, 3-1. Jessica Cantrell on deck. 
Let's see what Coach Adams tells her to do here. She might get the green light. Still a base open though. Holds that bat high, wide open stance, 3-1 from Simpson. Is slammed to left field, but well foul. Once again, just getting ahead of it. And it's a full count to Mackenzie Ferris. Get the crowd yelling, Yahtzee behind me. Payoff pitch. Upstairs, ball four. Ramirez heads over to second base. Bases loaded for the second straight inning. Last time the Wildcats had this, there was one away, but they came up empty, leaving the bases loaded. So Jessica Cantrell, a chance to really, and I mean really help her own cause right here. Davis at third. Pitch to Cantrell, almost over the head of Sorardi. And almost back to the backstop. So Davis over at third base, Ramirez at second, Ferris over at first base. There's nobody out here in the bottom of the second inning. Outfield shades a pull. Gordon almost with the back to the wall. Pitch is way inside to Cantrell, it's 2-0. Oh. Simpson having a little trouble finding the zone right now. But the Wildcats pouncing over anything that gets over the plate. Win a little bit to our backs. So you can kind of see the flags take back there. 2-0 pitch. Hits a left field, but well foul. Wildcats really want to let this one fly. Already leading by four. A chance to bust this game open even more. Simpson ready. Contrell ready. 2-1 pitch from Simpson. Now one misses upstairs. It's 3-1. Alt Miller on deck. So Cantrell can help her own cause here with a walk. But I would imagine she wants something a little bit more. The way she'll take RBIs any way she can get them. 3-1 pitch from Simpson. Is upstairs, ball four. So Davis trots on home to score. Ramirez heads over to third base, Ferris to second, and it's five to nothing. Wildcats, in conversation in the circle right now as Peyton Altmiller steps in now. She doubled home a run her last time up, and that was bringing home Villarreal, who was courtesy running a four. Cantrell, and speak of the devil, there she is about first base, Villarreal. Curtis running for Jessica Cantrell. Altmiller was left stranded her last time up. Let me get all the way to third base. And Cougars pretty much have no one on the bench. They have one person on the bench, and that's Fatina Davis. So left-hander steps in now, Altmiller. Outfield still shaded this time over to the left. Pitch to Altmiller. Upstairs. Ramirez at third. Ferris at second. Villarreal over at first base. Still nobody out in the bottom of the second. Altmiller at the plate. 1 0 pitch up Simpson. Upstairs. Simpson is a, did not find the zone right now. The Wildcats are just trying to be patient. What's the price of the center fielder Suarez so far over to the left right now? 2-0 pitch. That one gets away from Sorardi, but both runners are going to stay put. It's a 3-0 count. Davis currently on deck. Once again, Maris at third, Ferris at second, Villarreal over at first base. Alt Miller waiting for a 3-0 pitch from Simpson. Simpson swings the arm around, here it comes. Um, back to back, bases loaded, walks, makes it six to nothing. As Ramirez trots on home. Next up, our 
as Cameron Davis steps in, now hit by pitcher in previous plate appearance. So Ferris at third base, Cantrell, who also walked. As that one's upstairs. So that's actually four consecutive walks. As Ramirez has walked, Ferris has walked, Cantrell has walked, and Alt Miller has also walked. Pitch to Davis. That one hits Davis. Second time she's hit by a pitch tonight. And the merry-go-round just keeps moving for the Wildcats as Ferris trots home as well. Emily Sumner will step in. So it's Villarreal over at third base, Alt Miller at second, Davis at first. It says crowd is letting her have, letting her have it right now. So usually we'd hear the dugout yell, but never heard the crowd get really this hype over a regular season softball game. A few playoff games. So Sumner waiting for a 1-0 pitch, open stance, 1-0 pitch, and that one's upstairs. Ibsen has not found the zone in three straight batters. It's currently at seven to nothing in the bottom of the seconds. Wildcats pretty much just, just keeping the bat in their shoulder, metaphorically speaking, 2-0 pitch. That one's upstairs, and it's 3-0 pitch to Sumner. Brown's on deck. Brown, coincidentally, the last batter to have not reached. So the only batter to have not reached as she popped out to the catcher her last time up. Villarreal over at third base, Alt Miller at second, Davis at first, 3-0 pitch, rolls in there and gets away from Sorardi. Another run comes home. This time it'll be Villarreal, courtesy runner for Jessica Cantrell. And I'll bring up Dakota Brown. This conversation in the circle with Simpson. So Brown, the last batter, who has last batter in the lineup, only batter to have not reached. In her previous plate appearance, he popped out to the catcher, Sarati. With also, also with the bases loaded. So second half bat with the bases loaded. This time there's nobody out. Wildcats this inning have doubled their score. And they're looking like they might break my scorecard yet again. But I'm okay with that. So Alt Miller at third base, Davis at second, Sumner at first. Simpson have difficulty finding a zone. First pitch, well inside, and that hits Brown. So Brown finally reaches. Every single Wildcat has reached safely tonight. Alt Miller comes on home to score. It's nine to nothing as Davis moves on over to second base. The third base, Sumner moves over to second base. Back to the top of the order for Roberson. Roberson had two at-bats in the first inning. She grounded out the second. Her last time up had a double in the first as well. One for two. As Roberson tried to swing at that one, hits it off her heels. She's going to walk that one off. In case you're wondering, the run rule, the rule works as 15 after three, 10 after five. A wide open stance by Roberson. She's looking to pull this one over the left field wall and she hits one over the right field. Salinas ranging in and she can't come up with it. Coming on home is Davis. They're gonna send Sumner home as well. The throw is gonna go to second base. It's 11 to nothing. So a two run, I'm not sure what you're gonna rule that, maybe an error or a single. I'm gonna call it a single regardless as Davis scores. Sumner scores. Brown moves on over to second base. There's still nobody out. It's 11 to nothing for Cassidy Davis. 
First time in a long time the bases haven't been loaded. Davis with a single her last time up, and that was to begin the inning. That one's inside, and it hits Davis. So another hit by pitch as Roberson heads on over into second base. How many hit by pitches is that for Simpson? It's a few. By my count, I think five. Maybe six, seven. I think I maybe forgot to write down a couple, but Ramirez walked her previous plate appearance. First pitch upstairs. So we got Brown over at third base, Roberson at second, Davis at first, and 1 0 pitch misses upstairs. As Simpson. Just cannot find the zone right now. Wildcats happy to oblige. Wide open stance Ramirez holds the bat very high. One pitch, that one slammed to left field and deep if it's fair, it is foul! <laughs> that looked like it may have gone over the foul pole. I think you even heard the public address announcer go, come on. <laughs> That really did look like a grand salami by Ramirez. Finally got something to hit though. See why Simpson might be a little bit scared to get one over the plate right now to Ramirez. But a 2 1 pitch, see what happens here. This one's going to roll in there. It's going to roll away from Sarati. Everyone's going to stay put though. There's not very much space behind the backstop. A little bit difficult to tell from this angle. It's a 3 1 count as Mackenzie Ferris on deck. Brown over at third base, Roberson at second, Davis at first. 3-1 pitch to Ramirez, upstairs, ball four. As Brown comes on home to score. There's still nobody out, it's now 12 to nothing for Mackenzie Ferris, already, already with a home run tonight. Ferris may try to jump on this first pitch right here. First pitch is outside for a ball. So I may have just forgotten to write down a few, but on my count, there have been five walked, five walked batters this inning. I think there's gotta be more than that. 1-0 pitch to Ferris, misses. It's 2-1-0. Wildcats this inning, only two hits. That's the one thing I can say. There's only been two hits for the Wildcats this inning. And they have scored eight times. Eight. 2 0 pitch. That one's popped up. Now it's going to go foul. It's Ferris getting way ahead of that one. Behind me yelling, Simpson has 10 walks. Might be kind of accurate, but I'm not really sure. 2-0 pitch. That one's hitting the end of left field and deep. Gordon going back at the wall. It's off her glove, almost clearing the wall. Roberson's going to come home to score. Just now picking it up is Gordon. Everyone's going to stay put. Third base, runner at third's going to head on home. Two more runs score as Ferris Mitch. A grand salami by that much. As Roberson came home to score, Davis came home to score, Ramirez heads over to second base. That one was off the glove, another single, a two run single. It's now 14 nothing for Jessica Cantrell. Double in a walk, she has scored twice. And her previous plate appearance was in this inning. Pitch to Cantrell, misses upstairs. That's only the third hit to this inning, the third hit. And they've scored 10 runs. Oh, 
1-0 pitch to Cantrell. That one's popped up. Center fielder, no one's there in center field. That one's going to drop. As Cantrell was caught between first and second base, they got to send the runner on home. There's me no throw to the plate, though, as there was a lot of confusion right there, but another run scores. It's now 15 to nothing. Has now Rhea reached run rule territory. So Cantrell with a multi-hit game. As Ramirez scored, Ferris went from first to third. Cantrell winds up at second base. Allmiller steps in with a double and a walk. Pitch misses upstairs. That's the 11th run scored. Stolt Miller inside, gets away from Sorardi and coming on home to throw back to the plate. It's going to get away, and Jessica Cantrell's going to come home. 17 to nothing. There hasn't been a single out recorded this inning. As Ferris scored, Cantrell scored. In an inning where it's felt like there's been base runners, because there has been pretty much base runners the entire inning, with the exception of when Davis led off the inning. The bases are now empty. When it's got to be, right now, a nightmare situation for the Cougars. But Wildcats keeping it moving. 2-0 pitch, misses outside. It's 3-0 to Altmiller. Davis on deck. Miller ready for a 3-0 pitch, misses upstairs. Another walk from Sipson. That's the second walk this inning to Alt Miller. And I'll bring up Cameron Davis. Davis has reached twice, I think both times by hit by pitch. And they can't say about Sipson, she's got a smile on her face and she's laughing out there in the circle. No one out in the second inning, it's 17 to nothing. Wildcats have scored 13 times. Lucky 13. Suddenly fielder Suarez still shifting over. The lights have started to come on here at Elgin High School. Been blowing right behind us. Davis scored this inning already. All Miller over at first base. First pitch misses outside. Davis ready for a 1 0 pitch. All Miller over at first base. As time. Oh, that's the first out of the inning. All Miller got off of the plate, off of the first base bag. So she is out because you cannot take a lead in softball. So there's one away here in the bottom of the second. That's the first out of the inning. As that one rolls in there, it's 2-0. Oh. I've never seen that before in softball. But it is the rule, you cannot take a lead. She took a lead for the pitch was thrown. 2-0 pitch, misses upstairs to Davis, and it's now 3-0. So one out recorded in the bottom of the first, bottom of the second inning. A very interesting out indeed. Davis is ready for 3-0 pitch from Simpson. Wide open stance, and she watches that one go whiz right past her head. And another walk this inning. Now I'm bringing up Sumner. Reached twice now, I think both times on a hit by pitch. Yeah. 
I apologize, she's done a better job keeping track of those hit by pitches. I just forgot to write them down after a while. So Davis over at first base, Sumner at the plate, and she looks at that one for a strike. And I think this inning, and the, I'm being serious here, that might be the first strike that Simpson has thrown where the batter hasn't swung at it, or hasn't been fouled. The first looking strike by Sumner, by Simpson to Sumner. A one pitch. That one's in there for a strike. I think Coach Adams may have said we've not had enough of this. O2 pitch. Upstairs, it's one and two. So Davis at first base, Sumner at the plate. One out recorded this inning. It's 17 to nothing, two one pitch. That one rolls in there. And heading on over second base will be Davis. That one gets away from Sorardi. So it's two and two actually to Sumner. Brown is on deck. Every batter for the Wildcats has reached so far tonight. 17 runs, and I will try my best to give you the number of hits at the end of this one. 2-2, two, two, misses upstairs, it's 3-2. and two. First full count. since earlier this inning. Payoff pitch to Sumner. Inside, much of that hitter or not, I'm gonna rule that as a walk to Sumner. Sumner's reached all three times. Now bring up Dakota Brown in her second plate appearance this inning. She's popped up, she's hit by a pitch. Hit by a pitch, brought home a run. This is going to be a fun game to score once this is all said and done. I'll try my best to give it over to you. Pitch to Brown upstairs. Roberson on deck. If she were to get an at bat, it would be her third at bat this inning. The crowd just got real quiet. Pitch to Brown. That one slammed to left field, but foul. Gee, correction, it'll be the fourth at bat this game for Roberson, her second this inning. It's the Brown, popped up. Simpson coming over, and third baseman can't come up with it. However, everyone was staying put. So the third baseman, Rebus, couldn't catch it, but Davis, expecting her to catch it, falls down on the ground. That should have been a pop fly regardless. So there's two away. Actually, that will bring us to the end of the inning. Not for sure that was only two outs in the inning. And they're going to say that was three outs. I only counted two. Not sure what they ruled there. Even the crowd seems a bit confused, but that's the third out of the inning. That'll bring us to the top of the third. And what a productive bottom of the second it was before the Elgin Wildcats, the score 17 to nothing. And I will try my darndest right now to score that inning for you. If you just give me a moment.
So we're getting ready for the top of the third inning. Let me give you some of the stat lines. Just for the second inning alone, there was eight walks. 13 runs scored, eight walks, five hit by pitches, and only four hits. Mackenzie Ferris came this close. I mean, she came as close as you could possibly get to hitting a, hitting a grand slam. But she settled for a two-run single. It has been a very productive night for her already with five RBIs. So in a game where there's this many runs scoring, this much offense, kind of hard to pick an offensive MVP, but if I had to pick one right now, it would be Mackenzie Ferris. A three-run home run and a two-run double. Three-run score tonight. One of three batters that has scored all three times they've come up to the plate. But they've gotten on base. So Cantrell back in the circle. It'll be eight, nine, and one. It'll be Suarez, Salinas, and Sibson. Right now, the Wildcats leading at 17 to nothing. Unless the Cougars score three runs this inning. This is run rule territory right here. It's 15 after three. Cantrell only lying one hit. She has struck out six. Every out she's gotten, she's gotten by the strikeout. First pitch to Suarez. Misses inside. Now the infield outfield hasn't really had to do much for Jessica Cantrell. Only one hit for the Wildcats. And for the Cougars, that's a hit by Gordon. An overhead of Sumner. Over at second base. 1-0 pitch, that one's in there for a strike. <laughs> one one pitch, now one's hitting the end of right field. Brown coming in, and that one's gonna drop in fair territories. Brown couldn't come up with that one. And in there with a double, is Suarez. They have an excuse me double. Brown just could not catch up that one. That was just placed so perfectly. So that'll bring up Salinas. The camera went out there for just a moment. Not really sure why, but it did. But everything's okay, we're all connected. Pitch to Salinas, that one gets away from Davis and trying to head over to third base. And safe at third base is Suarez. So Maris is unable to apply the tag. So runner at third base of nobody out. Cougars trying to end the shutout. It can be sometimes very difficult to play with a big lead. 1-0 pitch to Salinas, that one in there for a strike. Took the umpire just a few seconds to raise his fist in the air. Cantrell taking her time between this pitch. 2-1, that one misses low. Check the count by the umpire. I think even he's kind of confused by the count. It is three and one. Pitch to Salinas. In there for a strike. The pitcher Simpson's on deck. Cantrell trying to preserve the shutout. Three, two, and that one misses outside. He gets away from Davis, flip home, and safe is Suarez as Cantrell couldn't hold on to it. Uh -huh. 
I think they're wondering if it's a situation where she can come home and score, but she can. As Salinas draws the walk. So I think they are trying to argue the point that she was, that she walked. It was a walk to Salinas and then Suarez came home. So it looks like they're gonna leave things the way they are. So nobody out and there's one run come across for the Conley Cougars, it's 17 to one. Like I said, when the inning started, in order to keep this game going, Conley needs to score at least two more runs. Conley did have one loss to Maynard New Tech, but they lost 27 to 15 in five innings. But for Conley, that included an 11 run third inning as that one catches the outside corner to Simpson. 0 for 1 with the strikeout. Salinas over at first base. So the wind has died, but the mercury has dropped here at Elgin. On one pitch, that one misses outside. One one pitch to Simpson has swung on and missed. It's one and two. Kapua on deck. Salinas over at first base. There's nobody out. One run already crossed for the Wild for the Cougars. Comes the one, two. Swung on and missed. Strike three as Davis applies the tag. Seventh strikeout for Jessica Cantrell. And there's one away for Kapua. As Kapua swings and misses at the first pitch. Gantrell ready, comes the 0-1 pitch to Kapua, and that one in there for a strike, it's 0-2. Davis couldn't quite cleanly field it, but it still counts as a strike. Salinas over at first base. O2 pitch, that one is foul back at the plate. O2 pitch, catches the outside corner, strike three. Who uh, strikes out for the second time tonight. Eighth strikeout for Cantrell. So all the outs that Cantrell has recorded have come by the strikeout. And it goes back over to Martinez. She struck out in her previous plate appearance. Last chance so far for the Cougars as that one misses outside. Once again, a reminder. This out's recorded, that should be the end of this one. It's 15 after three. This time was called. Remember, if two more runs come across here for Connolly, we'll head to the, we head to the bottom of the third inning. 0-1 pitch, and swung on and miss. It's 0-2 to, to Martinez. Martinez was trying to extend this one. Swart, Selena's over at first base. Outfield playing very shallow. 
0-2 pitch from Cantrell. Upstairs, he gets away from Davis, heading on over the third. Second base is Salinas. So runner in scoring position with two away for the Cougars here in the top of the third inning. Here comes the one, two, outside. As Martinez doesn't want to swing at that one. Okay, Cantrell swings the arm around, 2-2 pitch, cut on and missed, strike three, and that is the ball game. Jessica Cantrell gives up one run on two hits and a walk. She strikes out nine batters as the Elgin Wildcats run rule the Pflugerville Connolly Cougars by a final of 17-1. Wildcats fired on all cylinders in this one, took advantage of everything they could take advantage of. And let me give you some final stats in this one as this will be an interesting stat line on the end of this. As he listened to the crowd sing goodbye. So for the Cougars, there, sorry, for the Wildcats, there were eight hits overall. They scored 17 runs on eight hits. And one, two, three. From my count, eight hit by pitches. And believe it or not, actually, there actually was not any walks in the first inning. None. That's eight walks, eight hit by pitches, eight hits. So the magic number today is eight. As you can see the crowd starting to make their way out of this one. So my camera's gonna start shaking here for a little bit. Let me update this right here. As the Wildcats win this one, 17 to one. I was mentioning earlier, if I could pick an offensive MVP, have to go up Mackenzie Ferris for a three-run home run back in the first inning. She ended up having five RBIs total. I think almost every single batter this game had at least one RBI. I can't really confirm this. I could probably go through each individual batter and try to figure out overall who had, if each one had an RBI. It certainly does feel like it, though, as in the second inning, a lot of bases loaded walks and hit by pitches. There was... At least a couple hits the bases loaded, some pass balls. It was a crazy game overall. We had the runner out because he stepped off the base for the ball was thrown. It was an all-out crazy game, but a big win for the Wildcats as they improved to 12 and three on the season, five and zero in district play. And you can catch me Friday nights. I'll be broadcasting for your Elgin Wildcats baseball team. Friday night. So that'll do it from us here at Elgin High School. I'd like to thank my QA Shane for making sure everything sounds good. For Suna Vincat for giving me all the equipment, make sure it sounds good. To Vite Media for allowing me to broadcast these games. And for Elgin Wildcats for allowing me to broadcast games. And for you for allowing me into your homes, wherever you are, and listening to this broadcast. And I do appreciate you very much. My name is Brian Reen saying so long. I'll see you next.